What's up guys? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a, an RV or a camper? Um, I'm here to show you or to talk to you about my experience so far. So here we go. So back in November, or October, I can't really remember, um, I had a job opportunity come up and I took it. And I know I've mentioned it a few times. I have did a video of, of my last day at my other job um, and everything, but just want to recap for everybody. Uh, so I took a job here in Houston. But my youngest daughter, Sarah, as awesome as she is, she was a junior and we were worried about her having to start a new school. So we did a little research and uh, found out, got with the school and talked to them. And uh, anyway, she's working toward graduating early this year. So that's happening. So what it caused me to have to do was leave them back home in the house and come over to Houston and stay in the camper. So that's what I've been doing. I am basically, I'm about a month, I'm a little over a month into this and just figured I would share my experiences. If nothing else, I would rant a little bit so that when I look back on this decision, uh, I don't know, I'm still weighing it out. Was it worth it, was it not? Uh, first thing, for a married person or for someone who's very close to their wife or their family, uh, I don't advise this whatsoever. Um, one of the hardest things that I've had to deal with is just like loneliness, right? You don't realize you don't realize how good it is to come home every day and your family just be there and you just sit on the couch and talk and laugh and carry on about life. It doesn't seem like it's very instrumental in your everyday uh, activities but it is you know and not having that makes such a difference and uh, so that's 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 a big deal uh, so you got to really consider that uh, unless of course you're bringing your family with you and then that brings me to point number two um, there's not a lot of room right I'm by myself so I manage but I'm a big guy but still I mean there's not a lot of room here. There's not a lot of storage. Uh, you could probably ooh, over that side. That's the closet. You know, it's like uh, let me move you over. There's my closet's open right now, but there's where I keep my clothes. Uh, a lot of my everyday dress shirts are hanging on the uh, window there. But not a lot of storage space. Not a lot of storage space at all. So if you did have your family with you, it would make it, uh, it would just multiply the struggle of not a lot of room. Uh, there's ways to manage it, you know. I mean, you can go and run to the shower house, take showers, and use the bathroom and get out. Um, I've got a bike. I'll get on my bike and just ride around just to get out of here because you get kind of like cabin fevered, you know, just sitting in there all the time. But point number three, we roll into that, is location. Where I am is a nice place, but the actual um, logistics of it, where it is, uh, in conjunction to, you know, the rest of. Uh, the city and what's going on there's a lot of construction any direction you go from here 
Uh, like I said, this is a great place. South Lake RV, it's amazing, but it's right off of 288 in Houston, south of Houston. And um, even though I looked at a map and I said, you know, this is probably the best place uh, logistically for me to be. It's like 12 miles from work. Um, although that doesn't mean anything, it takes me an hour to get there. But uh, it's just kind of a struggle to get in and get out. So you got to really think out some uh, logistics and weigh the options, right? So it really mattered to me. I've, I've actually considered uh, moving to a different location. And um, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, every other location is, is farther from work. And although it probably would be better... Um, to do everything else, uh, it's really nice to be able to jump in my Jeep and be at work in, you know, 20 minutes um, in the mornings. It still takes an hour to get back, but it's going to take me an hour to get out of downtown to get anywhere. So, uh, so the farther I get away from here, the worse that's going to be. Um, cooking, you don't realize how many things you have just available at your house um, right now and, and you know I'm not even ashamed to show you, show you this but there's my spice rack is on the back of my oven there these are my dishes that I just washed so <laughs> It's, uh, you know, welcome to, to camper life. I got my bread sitting up there. I just washed dishes. I laid those out. Um, just cups available. I mean, some stuff is just set up there out of the way. It's just kind of a catch-all area uh, for the kitchen until I go to cook. When those dishes dry, I'll put those up and they'll be out of the way. But the spices and such, when you go to cook, it's, you know, you think about going camping, you're only there for a week or less, you know, roughly. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. You just carry exactly what you need for seven, eight days, and you're, or three or four days, or whatever, and you're good. Uh, but in this case, not so much. It's like, it's a daily thing. And uh, I went to the grocery store the other day, and bought some stuff and it wasn't much and I filled my freezer up I almost didn't have enough space in my freezer to put it all and it was like it was only about a week's worth of work of work a week's worth of food uh, so you got to be kind of picky about your food and the way you prep things I got a grill um, I've cooked a lot on the grill when I just want to I've got popcorn easy to stow away I just throw it in the microwave um, I try not to eat out a lot because, I mean, this is a long-term thing. Four or five months is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but, so anyway, so I know this is kind of a long video at this point. Uh, but it is what it is. So what are my absolute transparent thoughts on living in a camper? Um, it's hard to sleep at night sometimes. you got to tinfoil the windows. But only some, because then otherwise you literally like living in a coffin box. It drives me nuts. So I got like um, back when the back in the sleeping area, I've got one side tin foiled off because there's a light that just kind of glares in. Um, it's hard to sleep. Being lonely makes it even worse. Um, Texas weather. Oh God. I thought where I came from was bad. It's actually worse here. It literally is uh, 80 degrees, or it feels like 80 degrees, 70 degrees one day, and 30, 30 degrees with a 29 degree wind chill the next. Uh, it's been crazy this week. I was running the AC one night just to keep cool enough to sleep, and then the very next night I was running the heat, and actually I had to loan one of my gas bottles to a neighbor because it just came out of nowhere. You know, everybody's busy, you know, you don't watch the weather constantly. But uh, if you're going to embrace this lifestyle for long term, there's a lot of habits that you're going to have to change. Um, you're just not, you're not going to be able to live the same lifestyle as you would in your house. You're going to kind of have that, uh, that minimalist, that minimalist um, mindset. You're going to have to really think about how to minimize everything you do um, 
I literally, and, and it takes a lot of time to do things. So we're at home, I may come home and I may do something. Well, my wife's actually the one usually cooking dinner or, or we just grab something out or, or we grill and everything's right there and it literally takes like 20 minutes and you're done. And then she or my daughters usually help clean up after that. And um, everybody kind of does their thing but when you're by yourself in this arrangement, uh, everything's a chore. You come home, you, uh, just to get a shower, turn on the water heater, because you can't leave it on all the time because I'm not, I'm not hard connected to gas. I'm running off bottles, which I have to conserve. So you turn on the gas to get the water heated up. You start prepping your food. You cook your food. And the reason I do it in this order is so I can wash dishes with the hot water and then allow it to stay and leave the water heater on longer so that once it heats back up again, I can get a shower. Um, so really, you get off you get off work. It takes an hour, say 4:30. Um, takes an hour, 5:30 to roughly six, right before you get settled in. So it's six o'clock. Turn on the water heater. I mean, you look at 20, 30 minutes just waiting on the water to heat up. You prep your food. You turn on the grill. You cook. You wash dishes. You shower. Before you know it, it's eight o'clock. It's nine o'clock. It's time to go to bed and turn around and do it over again. So it's um you stay busy doing things that normally wouldn't take as much time and effort if that makes any sense hope it does so it just eats up a lot of your time and then um saturdays and sundays depending on your off days saturdays and sundays roll around you really got saturday to to kind of chill a little bit and you go find something to do Sunday rolls around I'm fixing to try to find a, a church in the area so that's gonna take some time and Sundays are my day to wash and dry my clothes do my laundry um, and that takes time because I don't have a washer and dryer here it's not like I can just throw them in the washer and go do something else I have to go to the washeteria and stay with my clothes or else I'm gonna steal them and uh, wash two loads dry them twice before you know it you spent two hours just doing laundry uh very little laundry to where you know regular lifestyle wouldn't take up a lot of your time at all uh, and i'm not talking about folding it i'm talking about just literally washing and drying it and getting it out and bringing it back so anyway if you're willing to change your total lifestyle and how you do things your daily workflow yeah it's not bad um, if you're okay with being away from family which I'm not but I mean I could see uh, if I knew that I could go home more or they could come here more uh, it wouldn't be so bad I don't think uh, it still suck but uh, not near as bad so all right I'm gonna wrap this up by saying uh, I'm not totally enjoying my RV long-term experience. Uh, I am enjoying the place. South Lake RV has been really good. The staff here, uh, really awesome people. Um, one of the ladies, like the main lady, she's like, she owns a Jeep, and uh, she talks. We talk Jeeps, and she's uh, her uh, and her. Her and her friends, I think she said they, they do uh, sailing. So, you know, we talk about the water and whatnot. So, she's up in the front office, somebody to chit chat with every now and then when I'm doing my laundry or whatever. So, that's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, the place is great. I'm just not having the greatest time. And I got the good neighbors, too. I mean, everybody's really respectful. You know, I leave my lights on in my Jeep, they come tell me. And <laughs> I mean, people watch out for your stuff. Uh, but I just I'm ready for it to be over with and I guess that's all I got to say about it and if my family's watching this I love you and I miss you so freaking much <laughs> this is killing me and it sucks alright guys thanks so much <laughs>